Check. Check. You guys can uh, can hear me. I know why I wasn't streaming before, but uh, sound should work. You should be able to see me and hear me. We have some issue with this mic. I'm waiting for the wire for the Rode Wireless Pro to come out even here in Portugal, and I'm gonna upgrade. The levels should be good. <clears throat> okay, perfect. All right, I'm gonna wait a minute, but we can start because there's so many questions. My YouTube channel is with so many comments about these uh, new uh, Blackmagic camera, Blackmagic cinema camera. It's hard for me not to say the word pocket because I'm so used to it, but as you can see here, if you can, um, it says Blackmagic. So full frame 6k so this is the camera i've been playing around with this camera um for four days now i'm gonna answer i think i wrote down a bunch of question here uh that is gonna probably answer to all the ones that i already uh read here so i'm gonna basically just start with these ones and uh and then I'm gonna try to read through all of these, but uh, yeah, we should be able to uh, live. Let me do a little post here. Let's go live. I'm gonna share the live one more time on the gram so everybody can join. I know it's a Friday night, so Friday night, Friday at noon. So thank you guys for, for being here. I know that, uh, you know, maybe you were supposed to be somewhere. Um, I don't know, but uh, thank you so much for being here on a Friday. So let's uh, start. Uh, so many questions to answer. All right, let's talk about this camera. I use Apple. Looks amazing. Yeah, it is quite, quite, quite amazing. But I oh, yeah, probably the YouTube send notification out right now, so we'll see. We see how this is gonna work out. I'm gonna wait maybe one more minute just so everybody to actually starts a little bit earlier, but but yeah, guys. So just wanted to keep it uh, nice and short. I don't want to really go over time or whatever. But we we're gonna take our time to talk about it. There's gonna be a lot of videos coming out. We test. Uh, you saw I released the rolling shutter test. Now. These guys, um, I want to start from, uh, actually, let's start from the rolling shutter because I saw a couple of, uh, um, a couple of questions about it. And, uh, I saw all the comments on the video test that I released today, which I was like, I'm not even, I mean, I'm, how you say it? I'm confused. I'm confused because, uh, you know, when I started out, we had a 5D Mark II with no autofocus, no EBs, shit colors uh super crappy dynamic range but everybody was super excited you know uh that are, and this was like years and years ago right so now maybe people just give it for granted uh without realizing what black magic uh is actually offering us so my my first point i want to make about this camera then i'm going to talk about my impression or whatever but there is a big uh, um hate for this camera that comes from all over the place. I know this is just a minority of people. I know Blackmagic is gonna sell thousand, but apparently, but apparently all these people that, that, that are piece of Blackmagic, that they have all these arguments, arguments with my opinion don't make too much sense. But to start from the running shutter guys, you see the, um, the running shutter test video, right? And everybody, terrible. Oh my gosh, you can't shoot with that camera. It's a toy camera. It's an amateur camera. It's a shit camera. It's this, that, and that. Um, so those are not really real world situation. You don't go on a set. You don't go on a set and you start panning like this, like crazy. I mean, cinema has always been about you know panning gently, tilting, all these kind of movements. So I don't really understand. Like 
and also some people you know telling me oh my gosh yeah even the pocket 6k was terrible and if you choose slow motion you know it's a terrible camera you're not gonna be able to grab good footage which i mean i don't think that what i shot with the pocket 6k the one that i'm filming right now was bad i thought it was pretty good you know so uh i've been shooting with this camera for four days and the footage looks fantastic like the, there's nothing to complain about that rolling shutter thing is just a in my opinion, it's a super overrated thing. Unless you shoot sports, eye moving object all the time and for a living, you know, if you shoot, if, if you are a filmmaker for the, I don't know, uh, Miami Eats, that you follow them all the time, of course you need a camera with a better sensor readout and a better, uh, maybe a global shutter camera for that matter. So I don't know. So I can't understand in those situations, but if you're shooting a movie, a commercial, or where there's no like crazy pan, uh, all these rolling shutter um, argument, it's, kind of really doesn't make any sense. It seems to me that it's just another uh, thing where people want to complain because before they were complaining about the, the, the S35 sensor, which was way too cropped, and about the fact that uh, there was not OLPF inside the camera. Now you have the full frame, you have the OLPF, you can shoot open gate three by two. And of course people focus their attention again on the body and on the, on the rolling shutter, which again, um, you see some comments that make think that this camera is absolutely unusable. I have a lot of footage coming out. You saw some shot uh, of walking shot, tracking shot, and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, sorry guys, but I don't really see um, any any problem. It's a beautiful camera, and I'm I found it exactly like the Pocket 6K. To be honest, um, on the other side, I also have an Ursa 12K. Uh, which has no rolling shutter at all. It's virtually zero rolling shutter. Like at, in 8K, uh, it disappears. In 4K, it's just like same. So, but there's no one instance where I went back in DaVinci and I look at the footage. I was like, oh my gosh, see, this is such a beautiful uh, readout on the rolling shutter. Maybe because I don't shoot sport, but I never felt the need to say, oh my gosh. Thankfully, uh, so lucky that I had the Arista 12K because otherwise the rolling shutter would be crap never happened. Like it exactly never happened that I went back in Da Vinci with the pocket footage and I saw some crazy rolling shutter. Guys, I shot with this camera filming, the original pocket 6K shot, a Mercedes commercial uh, filming drive from out of car uh, driving. And I mean, people loved it and I didn't notice any problems. So it seems to me another excuse that people have to complain and hate about black magic. The other point I want to make guys um, very quickly, which it's it totally blown me away how because I saw some pause I mean it, it, to me this is just so funny because technically I don't care but it's just like I think it's also important to try to educate people that maybe grew up in the YouTube war where they're just used to out of focus out of this out of that and out of that so that it, it, basically on YouTube there's like a 0.2 percent real filmmaking and all that other stuff is like vlogging and all this kind of stuff so it's like it's just like people making reviews and complaining about it all the time. So the other point I wanted to make is that I see all these YouTuber and influencer posting about um, we don't want a, a cinema camera in a photo camera body and all these sort of things, right? But how come that everybody's so excited and every, everybody's pushing the FX3 so bad because they use it for this uh, future film, right? I mean, the FX3 is a 4,000 years camera in a crappy, super small photo camera body with a crappy screen, a crappy interface, crappy color size, not really good highlights roll off. If you want to shoot in low light, you're absolutely apt to go to, to 12,800 ISO, which at that point you're going to clip pretty much every single street light you have in the street. It does an incredibly poor job in color light, in color mix color temperature mixed light. So if you go in the street, you have a yellow light and a blue light, it does a terrible job and uh, it, the footage just fall apart. So, but everybody's super excited about this photo camera, which is a cinema camera, right? And actually Sony was so smart that was able to call this a cinema line, even though it's in a photo uh, body camera, right? Like everybody was excited for, for the A7S III, whatever. I mean, this is a photo camera body with a beautiful monitor, 6K full frame sensor, they shoot three by two uh, open gate. He has an L mount, which is amazing because you can adapt uh, uh, any really lenses. You can adapt EF like I did here. You can adapt a PL mount if you want to. You can adapt a Nikkor, you can adapt any lenses. And uh, yeah, and 
so I don't really understand these two standard for what Sony releases a photo camera that they call cinema camera and everybody's excited and at the point where they're there you know everybody's amazed that they use for this future film where Sony probably paid millions of dollars uh, for these guys to use this camera but when Blackmagic keeps going on this body which I think is actually amazing for what I do uh, everybody started bitching about it which is uh, kind of nice but uh yeah, this was a point that I wanted to make because it really seems to me there's like two standards where Sony comes out with anything and it's amazing, where Blackmagic comes out with anything and it's crap. So um, I thought it was just kind of funny. Um, okay, let me read a couple of questions, guys. So uh, there's just so many. Uh, man, I don't even know where to start. I'm going to start from the, from the bottom. Uh, what are your thoughts on dynamic range? So this is a good question. Actually, I wanted to talk about it. Uh, I wanted to talk about dynamic range and IR pollution. So uh, this camera is an OLPF inside right now. So I'm going to show you. Um, this is my Leica R28 mil. This thing that you see here, this is an old LPF filter, which technically is going to help with more aliasing and also IR pollution. So I honestly uh, didn't really, I mean, I use it at night. I don't know why, but I see some, sometimes it's, okay. I use it at night without any IR filter and usually I have some pollution with some lights at night too, but I, I didn't notice anything. And during the day, I also had my IR and V. So I, I still didn't do uh, a scientific test uh, regarding the IR filtration. So if you shoot with a regular ND, was gonna happen, but I mean, the, the scope, the goal of OLPF is, uh, you know, IR filtration system, uh, more and analyzing and all those artifacts that uh, might happen on the sensor. So as far as I know, yeah, they did uh, solve the issue with the IR pollution. So it's something that everybody wanted. You know, they just updated the Ursa 12K with the OLPF and it, it is pretty amazing that now they put it inside uh, this cinema camera 6k I think it's uh, pretty fantastic so IR pollution problem is technically solved again I don't have a super scientific test right now but I'm gonna do some uh, that I'm gonna really soon but uh, the, the IR pollution problem is uh, technically gone so um, I think we're good with that and the other thing that um, I wanted to talk about yeah that you guys asked me the dynamic range the dynamic range and here there's another um, thing that pissed me off quite a lot. Uh, I don't know if many of you remember, but Sony did claim for the A7S II 14 stop plus dynamic range, which is equal to an Aria Alexa Classic or an Aria Alexa uh, Mini or the Amira. It was the same sensor. So now people keep crying and complain and I, I, I thought I would never even heard the fact of it's, it only has 13 plus top of dynamic range. Guys, these are 13 real stops of dynamic range. They're not the 17 that Red claims. They're not the 14, 15 that Sony claims. These are actually usable stops of dynamic range. I stress this camera out like so bad, like even with the original pocket guys, and I could not clip the highlights. I shot at ISO 400 on a full frame with 6 stop ND and F2, which is super bright. And yeah, it was the image was super bright, but on the photo color, it was still not clipping. So in my opinion, uh, I don't know. In my opinion, it's just more. It's probably more. It could be that Blackmagic want to keep their Ursa you know, customers happy because if you're buying into the $6,000 camera, uh, you might be pissed that he has the same dynamic range of a $2,500 camera. Can it be? It could really well be. I do believe the dynamic range on the pocket um, 6K, it was already fantastic in my opinion. It, could probably, it was probably 13 stops. Um, on the this one, on this full frame one, I think it's between I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't have a lab to measure it, but it seems much more to me. Uh, not much more than 13 stop. I don't know if it's 
way more than the original pocket. I still have to check it out. It seems to me that the roll off and out, out the eyelets retention is a little bit better. Uh, what is really improved though are how clean the shadows are. So the shadows are super clean. Uh, eyelets retention is extremely high. So I think the dynamic range here, we're looking at a good 14 stars, maybe 13.5, but of real dynamic range. So I'm uh, really, really impressed with this camera. So higher pollution and dynamic range, fantastic. Um, this is another thing I, I wanted to, uh, to, to talk about because I think it's pretty important when, when, when people complain, oh yeah, Leo, he only has 13 stops of dynamic range. I think it's quite ridiculous to be honest. Um, but, uh, and, and yeah, and then this rolling shutter thing that people keep complaining about. about. So my thought about this, um, I mean, I'm really wondering if all these people complaining about rolling shutter are just nerds that sit in front of their computer reading numbers and specs and um, getting excited about this. Or because if you ever wa if you ever worked on a set and if you ever had your camera in your hands and if you ever capture footage for paid clients, I mean, this is irrelevant again, unless you're shooting something very specific like high moving subjects. So all these rolling shutter argument, I mean, are you really judging me panning the camera like this on a little table in my living room? This is, doesn't make any sense. I probably shouldn't even make that video, but people want it. Uh, I think I'm gonna redo one in it, like, and I'm gonna call it real uh, scenario of rolling shutter test because it seems to me that um, it's pretty unbelievable to be honest. Uh, but okay, so people want to complain about it that we always complain about it and be mad about it. But it's kind of funny, even also these two standards. I mean, when I think about it too, even the FX3 guys is a 4,000 euros camera that shoots H264. I repeat it, it's a 4,000 euros camera in a crappy body, super small, way too small to be able to shoot animal footage with a crappy EB system that doesn't really work. Like I have the ZV-1 here, it's terrible. Shoots H.264, roll off is bad, color science is just Sony, the texture is not there. They, you're obligated to film at 12,800 if you wanna shoot any kind of low light at the point where you have to go around uh, at night with ND. And, and people are crazy for the camera and they say it's the best camera. They actually released an update that allows you uh, to shoot real 24p in DCI 4K and the internet went nuts because their 4,000 euros camera after a year or two that was released was able to film 4K DCI um, at 24p. Mind blowing to me. Um, then we should talk also about the price because this camera is $2,500. And I want to repeat you guys what you have with this camera as a um, full frame 6K open gate up to 36P, 6K DCI up to 48 frames per second. You can shoot a, um, a 4K 241 at 60 frames per second, and you can shoot 4K S35 crop uh, at 100 frames per second or 50 frames per second, and then the 4K DCI I think is 100 frames per second or something like that. Uh, with beautiful B-Raw, yeah, they lost the ProRes. This is another thing that people ask me here in the question, I believe. Yes, they lost the ProRes. And what can I tell you? I've been shooting my ears and my pocket in B-Raw since forever. If you have uh, that client that absolutely re requires ProRes and you're obligated to deliver in ProRes and to shoot in ProRes, otherwise you won't be able to pay the rent, then you should get a Blackmagic 6K. Pro, the Pocket 6K Pro that can shoot ProRes. But in my opinion, it's a 30 years old codec, whatever. Uh, I'm only shooting B-Raw. DaVinci's button is gonna become the, the, the standard. And, and so, you know, there's not too much to talk about. I think it's a great choice. Also, Blackmagic is able to do all this thing with the cropper, with the 3x2, with the S45, S35 crop, because they have uh, this B-Raw. Otherwise with ProRes, it would be impossible. So just something to keep in mind guys uh, about this thing that, um, that, that they lost the ProRes. And the other thing that uh, I saw people asking me here, sorry guys, I, I read all the question, but I think the topic is always the same. So now uh, the ND, because this was another thing um, 
that I wanted to talk about. Yeah, it lost in D. As many of you know, I did return my original, uh, not original, the Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro after I did test the MD and they were not up to my standards. Now, not up to my standards doesn't mean that they can't work for other people. For me, they were just not good. They were not filtering all the IR pollution. So I was getting an insane amount of IR pollution on those ND filter. That means that I always had to use a clear um, IR cut. That means if I change lens, I still have to change that IR cut unless you wanna buy three, four, five, whatever. So uh, in my opinion, I much rather have an OLPF and uh, no ND, at least no, I mean, I think no ND is better than bad ND in my opinion. Um, and then people think that, you know, there's gonna come out a new camera, that they're gonna upsell you on, like Blackmagic doesn't really uh, think like that. Blackmagic uh, packs all the technology they have in their, the latest technology they have in a camera and they give it to you. That's why it took like two years or two and a half years. I mean, there was COVID, they had problem, probably with components like everybody else and they're not Sony or Canon, so it's still pretty hard to get some, some stuff, some chips and whatever. But uh, Blackmagic doesn't really think like that. So Blackmagic, if they didn't put ND in there, it's because they couldn't do it. It's because probably there's not, I'm pretty sure there's not enough space with the L mount and the flange distance uh, to put the ND. So, uh, you know, again, I, I'm always used to, you know, yeah, I use my internal ND and the Ursan, but they're fantastic. And uh, it's a big full production cinema camera. I always tell people, guys, this is a $2,500 camera. Just to give you an idea, this is what you can buy, okay? This is what you can buy with 2,600 euros from Sony, this one. So we're talking about the exact same price, exact same price. This is a true cinema camera. You can shoot a <clears throat> whatever with this one. This one, I'm not gonna even talk about it, but just to give you an idea, this little thing <clears throat> is 2,600 euros. And I think that said it all. Um, so, so I'm gonna pick some random question, guys, because there's so many people, almost 200 people. <clears throat> Sony RAW sensor that is linear, it has no uh, zero. Uh, I don't, I don't know for this one. Uh, Matteo is the 4K RAW full sensor without, is there a crop? No, 4K guys is a S35 crop. It says in the menu, it said 4K S35. I don't know the crop. I didn't measure it. I don't know. I don't know if it's 1.5. I don't know if it's 1.3, but uh, I actually use my 19 mil today. Uh, I tried it on the, maybe I have it here, if I have a card in there, yeah. So I tried a 19 mil Leica R on a 4K S35 crop and it looked uh, pretty amazing, four by three. So I'm not too sure, I, I can actually show you. Um, this was 19 mil Leica on the 4K, uh, four by three. I don't know if you can see it, but we we'll try on the, yeah, 19, I don't know if you can see, well, I'm gonna post, I'm gonna post some frames about it, I don't think you can see, but wait, maybe I'm gonna dim down the monitor brightness, you're gonna be able to see. Uh, pa, 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 pa. So 19 mil S35 4K crop, and it look absolutely fantastic, so, um, it's gorgeous, so I think I'm actually gonna experiment way more with the S35 uh, crop because I love it. But this is another big thing, right? They're not just gonna stick to a uh, full frame, they're giving you the option to keep using your S35 lenses. So in this case, I have my Sigma 18 to 35 that I'm using on my pocket. If you do want to use your six, uh, S35 lenses, you can do so with that crop mode. Um, <clears throat> so these are a little bit my thoughts and some answer to the question. Um, imagine a full frame Ursa next. I mean, that's inevitable, right? That's absolutely inevitable. I mean, we for sure going to see an Ursa full frame, um, for sure. 
So how sturdy does the mount itself feel? The 6 feet profile is okay for a medium sized lens, but I often uncomfortable putting 70, 200 on it without lens support. No, it feels, <coughs> it feels pretty solid, to be honest. Uh, I, I can't move the, the adapter at all. Um, so I think it's great. I saw that Viltrox is selling a L, L to EF to L lock mount which it would be pretty amazing for my, I mean, this is not moving at all. There's no wiggle. There's actually way less wiggle with the, this adapter than with the Leica on my original Pocket 6K. So this is really super sturdy. Uh, but yeah, Viltrox has this adapter, lock, active lock or no, lock, EF lock, that basically works like a PL. So I think I might gonna get it, but so far this has been working pretty good. Um, <clears throat> do you think they will eventually update the 6k pro uh, i don't think so i don't think so i think you know this is it meaning i don't think they can fit nd in in this body so i think we either gonna see a new body soon um <clears throat> or they gonna keep the ursa they're gonna make the ursa smaller i don't know but um there's definitely something interesting, in my opinion, on the horizon coming soon because, uh, you know, this is a big deal, guys. Like, this is the first full frame black like magic camera, and um, so I'm excited for what's coming. Um, you think black magic is facing up arrest uh, in favor of B Raw? As far as I know, guys, they can't do Perez because it takes too much space and it's too heavy and it's too big. Where B Raw, with all the compression and the fact that they make the codec, they make the fear, the software, they make the, the, the hardware and everything that they manage to being able to crop in, crop out and, and do some like those crazy, um, you know, frame rates on the Ursa because they can shoot uh, 12K 75P, 8K 120P on the Ursa. Uh, you can shoot 12K, 8K, 4K, no crop. They're only able to do that because it would be raw. So I think if they want to keep doing this kind of stuff, they need to stick to be raw. So, but I don't think there's Nothing wrong with ProRes, you know, but uh, <clears throat> sensor by Lumix. Lumix S52, this is very likely the same Sony sensor that is in the Lumix S52, the L Mount Alliance, probably licensed many of them for the Alliance. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's a, I, I'm pretty confident this is not um, an Inau sensor. I think it's a Sony sensor, as you said, but uh, but that's where you think that's where you start seeing where it doesn't really make a difference if it's a Sony sensor because like the, the color processing, the color science, the dynamic range, the roll off, all of what they baked into this uh, B raw and this sensor, it's uh, it's unbelievable. It's something that Sony was never able to do. Now, guys, I don't. It trust me. I spent two thousand six hundred euros of my money because I fought to give it a try to Sony. I used the A seven S three, the FX three, many times. And now this Sony ZV-1, and there is just something about that footage, like if there is something about the Panasonic footage, even if you should be raw, uh, that it just doesn't add up. It, it doesn't look like black magic footage. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the, the texture. I don't know if it's just the, how it manages the, all these mixed color lights. Like, I don't know if it's like the, <clears throat> the highlights and the shadows, they blend together much, much nicer. What I see on a Sony when I shoot out in the street at night, I just see like a bunch of super uh, weird color shadows uh, and color casting eating the skin tones. With this camera, the ZV-1, which has the same sensor of the FX3, is the exact same thing. So I'm not saying it because I'm a fanboy because Blackmagic paid me. They never paid me. They just sent me a camera. Um, if you think how many I sold them, probably. Uh, hello, but uh, it's the simple truth, guys. It's like uh, you, you come with me, we put side by side a Sony, and so many people, my friend also, that had a Sony, you, you know, they came with me, they, they test out the Ursa, they test out the, the, the pocket, and when they check the footage next to each other, maybe on YouTube you don't see the difference, but when you go out in the real world and you start filming, you really can see the difference. So, uh, I mean, if you refuse to see it, it's probably a way to justify that 4,000 euros that you just spent on a uh, mirrorless camera that doesn't look that good, or, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, have you seen any cage options? So, guys, I might be wrong, but I think Grant 
said that this is the exact same body of the Blackmagic 6K Pro because he called it same platform and he also said this literal this word you can use the same accessory of the 6K Pro on this new camera unless I dream about it I'm pretty sure that's what he said so you can use any accessories of the Pocket 6K Pro which is great because I don't have to go you don't have to go crazy and buy more stuff so uh, yeah regarding crop uh, the 6k 3x2 Ooh, a lot of full width in the sensor yeah so guys you should full frame full sensor only in open gate then when you start going into dci of course it crops the top and the bottom just like it was doing before but it's still a full frame sensor you know it's just not reading the entire sensor but that doesn't mean it's cropping in <clears throat> or better it's just basically not recording the top and the bottom of the frame yeah so technically it is a crop but i mean it's still a crop on a full frame sensor so you still can have much more field of view compared to a pocket 6k um, so regarding the anamorphic guys i'm trying to get some lenses from brands uh so stay tuned for that we're gonna we're gonna talk about it we're gonna do a bunch of tests for those uh we see that um, yeah, Alessio Costantino could be interesting to see a variable ND filter instead of an adapter from EF to <clears throat> L mount, for example. And I think there are a bunch of adapters that already offer this. This could be a really good option, you know. Uh, I think red has something similar, I remember, like a mount that has variable ND inside or something like that. <clears throat> so I think may maybe we're gonna see more for PL mounts because these guys, they had a beautiful thing of this camera. Uh, we're finally done with. Oh, you can't adapt this or you can't adapt that you can adapt any lenses you want you want to use a cook pl you can use a cook pl you want to use a um, ef you can use a ef you can use any lenses you want on this like l mount so i think it was a great choice <coughs> are you selling the original 6k mm -hmm. no i think i'm gonna keep it uh for a while uh, maybe i'm gonna keep using for youtube uh, if I'm doing side by side, I mean, a lot, I have a lot of videos to do now, side by side and all this kind of stuff that I think I'm going to keep it for a while. <clears throat> Is the Super 35 a huge crop in the sensor? It doesn't seem so. I can't measure it, but it doesn't look like it. It's, a, it's either 1.3 or 1. I, I'm hoping it's 1.3. It could be 1.3. Maybe it's 1.5 though. I don't know, guys. I can't... Uh, I didn't measure, I don't even know how to measure it, to be honest, but, uh, <clears throat> but yeah. Uh, would you see, would you use now the Leica R 50 millimeter? No, no, no. My go-to lens now is the 35 millimeter because it's my favorite focal length and now I can finally use it, so. But I did shot some handle stuff. Uh, um, I did use some handle stuff with the 90 mil. On this one and I mean you have to be trained you be to, you have to be a good operator but I manage it so <clears throat> sorry yeah, we are gonna try to reach out to cook and see if they they're willing to send some sp3 lenses but we we'll see Nisi Athena lens no <clears throat> I, I don't even know <clears throat> I mean maybe I saw a post but I'm not sure where they are I mean, I, I have no clue. <clears throat> ah, the official product page is crop comparison with an image image overlay. Okay, I'm gonna check it out. It's 1.3 if, if we calculate from the resolution spec, which is fantastic. <coughs> Sorry guys, this air conditioning blasting. If, it's, if, it's, if the crop is 1.3, guys, poo, I mean, I'm going to shoot probably a crap ton of S35, to be honest. Especially if you want to do interview, you want to save space, but even the space actually is, is not pretty, it's not pretty, it's not too bad. Uh, can you tell us about a different option regarding the anamorphic squeeze? Uh, I don't know. I think there's everything. There's 1.3, 1.5, 1.8, 2, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, is 6K full frame is only the full frame version of the 6K35? No, it's it's a completely different camera, guys. It's a completely different sensor. So full frame sensor, OLPF, 
Leica L mount, CF Express. So there's quite a bit of a, of a difference here. So uh, do you think it will be an L mount Ursa? No, I don't think so. I mean, Ursa is gonna stick to PL. Maybe they're gonna add an L mount instead of an EF mount, possible. I don't know if it's feasible, but uh, I can see that. But Ursa always gonna come in PL mount and then maybe maybe they're gonna put an L mount inside so you can you can change it. Max frame rate, frame rate on 6K DCI is 48 frame per second. Um, yeah. And I have to say, guys, my light car looks fantastic on this camera. I just posted some frames on my Instagram and on my community tab on YouTube. I am working on the part two video of the hands-on and I'm working on the full camera test with all the beautiful footage for you guys. So it, it just, it's been four days no stop because I got the camera on the 11th and then I had to edit three, two, two videos plus the reel for Blackmagic all in these like three, four days. Plus I had a client interview and a client job that I'm editing and I'm finishing. So it's, it was a pretty bit of a mess of a, of a week. I need a drink for sure. <laughs> Not having press is a problem for a lot of people. I don't know, maybe if you are in television and they require ProRes 5 maybe, but again, I mean, I shot like a crap ton of things in this past two and a half years and I never shot ProRes and all my clients were happy, so. <clears throat> Would you prefer CF Express over external SSD? Of course, of course. Who wanna go around with the thing hanging? You just have this little card right here. Which is amazing actually because it costs way less than a CFast. This was 200 euros. 512 gigabytes. I mean, this cost less than SD cards because to be honest, <clears throat> the SD card that I bought for this stupid Sony ZV-1 was 200 euros and it was 120 or 256. No, probably was 128 actually, 128 gigabytes. So this was 200 euro for 512 gigabytes. Think about that. How convenient is Sony? How convenient. Do you think it's coming a full frame Ursa? Yes, I think. I'm speculating. I have absolutely no idea. But I mean, they came out with a pocket, whatever, uh, cinema camera 6K full frame. Of course, they're gonna come out with a with Ursa. <coughs> Mattel, love your work. Thank you. <coughs> so, guys, this gel thing. I keep seeing this word. Oh my gosh. Now I'm regretting to having uploaded that video because I, <clears throat> it, it literally is like, I don't know, I don't even have an example, but, uh, well, you're gonna see from the footage that I'm gonna pause, you guys, like, the, the, the rolling shutter is not, now, take this, this is my opinion, sure, but the rolling shutter is not a problem on this camera, unless you're shooting sports, action, and super fast moving objects. Otherwise, it's not a problem. Does it look a little bit weird when you do a pan, like a six pan per second? Of course, because it's a rolling shutter. Are the value a little bit too high and we want it to see a little bit low? Yes, but is it gonna affect my line of work? Is it gonna affect how my footage looks and how my what my client thinks? No. Uh, no. Low light, guys. Uh, I'm gonna do a side by side with the with the Pocket 6K. So far, it's impressive. <clears throat> Completely out of this world. Because at 45 minutes after sunset, I was able to get this shot. F2. ISO, uh, I hope it's gonna render in camera, but I'll try anyway. F2, ISO 400. <clears throat> I have a little bit of lag delay, so guys, please be, be patient. I don't wanna move the focus of the camera, but this shot here, maybe it's not in focus, but you can probably see the exposure. This was shot 
ISO 400 45 minutes after sunset. Um, I can zoom in right here just to show you. Let's see. The amount of light that comes into the sensor, guys, is like insane. This is the detail of the eye on my wife. Keep in mind, this is cool for low light. It's going to be extremely hard for you to shoot outside in the bright daylight with a 6-top ND at anything less than 5.6. Almost impossible, unless you're in the shade. But under the sun, against the sun, uh, you either stay at f8 or 5.6 or you need a shot with a 10 stop and these some shots I think the right and these probably the seven stops now uh, even eight to be completely honest with you <clears throat> it's, uh, it's a it's a crap ton of light coming into the sensor so yeah yeah it, it, it's unbelievable in low light now if we are in a pitch black situation at 3200 there is noise 100 percent but I Basically, <clears throat> I try at 1250, super clean. If you go a little bit higher in a pitch black environment, but you shouldn't do that. Uh, there's a little bit of noise, just like there was noise with the uh, FX3 at 12,800. If it's pitch black, there is noise there because I, I try and I test it. But as soon as you get into the city streets, my ISO was constantly at 400, max 800. I never even went above the 1000 mark for the second ISO if I'm in the street under street lights and all this kind of stuff I don't the max I go is 1250 it's too bright so I stick to 400 800 at night in the streets uh, I have another example here for you guys <clears throat> hopefully you're gonna be able to see me I don't know if there's a way probably but um, where is it this one right here beautiful this one was uh, ISO 800 there was a street light. There was a street light right there. And I mean, of course, I don't know if you can see. Let me dim it down. Maybe it's better. I need to find a way to share. Yeah. 800 ISO at night under a street lamp, under a street light, and uh, it just looks uh, fantastic, guys. It, it's super, super clean. I'm gonna try the zoom in version. <clears throat> this was all uh, F2, guys. F2, 2.8, ISO 400. Uh, it was fantastic. Uh, can I add a, f a frame in the chat? No, I can only start the poll or start Q&A. Hmm, bummer, but it looks... Uh, it looks amazing. If you go on my community tab or on my Instagram at Matteo Bertoli, you're going to see all this frame in full resolution. I'm going to upload them also as a photo. Uh, they are in my community tab. They are on my stories. Uh, I'm going to post them everywhere, but they're super clean. If you text me on Instagram, private message me on Instagram at Matteo Bertoli, uh, I can send you the file, the full frame, uh, full resolution, so you can zoom in and play around with it. Uh, no problem at all. So just hit me up. Uh, it's seriously I was seriously blown away because like the first day that I got the camera I pointed out for the window of my condo and it was night and uh, I couldn't go past 400 or it was too bright so I was at f2.8 ISO 400 and it was uh, incredible uh, the thing that struck me the most is how clean it is there's just not one single piece of noise uh, when you have a little bit of street light and all this kind of stuff so being able to shoot at 400 at night compared to these other guys where I have to go to 12,800 because everything above 1,600 is absolute crap here. Um, it is really cool. It is really cool. Uh, this footage on my channel, guys, I'm going nuts. Uh, give me a couple of days. Uh, I'm trying to get also to another place, uh, somewhere in Portugal, to film even more stuff, but I'm thinking to uh, um, pack up uh, together one minute video. Uh, just to pull it out there so you guys can watch it. So maybe tomorrow, tomorrow should be up. For some of you now to the camera, it is fine and likes result. What are the reasons they should upgrade to 6K full frame? I don't know, guys. Uh, 
it's just the, the, the black magic color. Black magic color sign is dynamic range, everything is fantastic. It's just at another level, you know. But uh, <clears throat> more than for my clients, I think I want the stuff to look cool for myself, you know. That's, uh, that's what I really want. Uh, with the phone close to my face, it's easy to see. But you know what I'm gonna do? I have my iPad here, so we're gonna try these. I'm gonna just airdrop them here. And I'm gonna try to show you. Maybe you can, you're gonna be able to see them from the iPad. So let me just airdrop these guys. Because I really wanna show it to you. I mean, I wish I could share them all for you to see. But again, if you text me on Instagram, um, I can share them with you, no problem. Uh, I also had another point that I wanted to make that I have here in my notes because I think there, there's some stuff that that um that um, that needs to be talked about about Black Magic. I think it's uh, I really I really was that surprised by all these eight. I mean, you all these people spent years complaining about a full frame. They got a full frame and they complained to oh the body, the body of the camera. I don't know what's going on with this box thing. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was actually the first point I wanted to make the body. Uh, so probably there are, there are some questions here saying, oh, it's the same, horrible, terrible, ugly body. Guys, you can say whatever you want about black magic, pocket, full frame body. Black magic delivers. And you know what's the reason why? Because if you could find another camera on the market that is a cube, and there are many, for the same price of this one, that can deliver the same quality of this one with the same ecosystem, with B raw integration, with Resolve. Think about it. DaVinci Resolve is 300 bucks, right? You're paying this camera $2,500, minus 300 bucks. So this camera is virtually $2,200. Find me a boxy camera on the market. Um, you find it, right? Again, the problem with all these people and, and the reason why I think they, they, they keep complaining and crying and commenting is that they know that they can't get the same black magic quality and uh, user face and ecosystem and uh, file management on any other camera. Kinefinity, Zcam, pretty unreliable in my opinion. I saw some footage, looks okay. Uh, I never seen it on a professional set. I had some people shooting for me with a Kinefinity and a Z cam a couple of times and there were problems. There were problems. They set up the tint at zero, but then in, in there were ProRes and the tint in post it was a plus 30 and we couldn't fix it. So the footage was all magenta and I kind of threw it away. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, they, they, they're not reliable. They, they, they always have problem or, or, I mean, because if they were good, then people wouldn't even complain, right? Like you need a box camera. I don't argue the fact that you want a box camera for whatever reason. I still don't understand it. Uh, I never felt this incredible need, this, this general thing about, oh, I need a cube. I was talking to some people before and, and they were like, uh, they suggested that all this cube thing is to rig it up so you can take photos and video for social media or YouTube uh, just so you can post a rig tour or whatever, this kind of stuff. And I think it's a pretty plausible um, thing because I never, in, in 12 years doing this job, I never heard anyone being so pissed at, at, at form factor. And uh, I mean, I don't know, guys. Uh, what I always say to people is like, uh, you probably don't realize how amazing having a five inches, and this is not a monitor. This is an amazing monitor because uh, the other advantage of like magic, this is and the reason why I don't want to sacrifice this guy is because this is not just the monitor. This is like insanely accurate in my opinion and insanely beautiful. I mean, I not using a monitor since I don't know, two years. And every time I try an external monitor, there's always off. And so the colors on this thing looks fantastic, looks amazing. Uh, the exposure is bright enough because uh, out in Lisbon, I kept it at only 50% brightness and it was uh, amazing. Never had an issue. So I really think that you don't know what you're losing until you lose it. Because I also have friends that bought a Komodo and now they're going back to Blackmagic Pocket because they're like, well, first of all, a red takes. Uh, 45 seconds to boot up, right? 
And second, they're like, you were right, you were right. I mean, I really miss the, the monitor. Of course, not for full production, for all this kind of stuff, you know, because like, full production, you want to rig it up your camera and everything. But the thing that this pocket is a pocket, this old pocket, these four factors allows you to do is that uh, you get out of your, you take it out of your backpack, right? You put a lens on it, okay? You put your card in here. You put your MPF battery in here. That's it. This is why this form factor, this is why the pocket originally was created. Because you can take it out of your backpack, your pocket, and start filming. So if I have to go and, you know, get some kind of some weird shot on a bus or in an environment where I don't want to uh, attract attention and all this kind of stuff, run and gun, people keep saying the cube, the, the box and the run and gun, which there are two separate things. This is run and gun. Because if I have to jump on a bus and I don't want to attract attention, you know, I can, oh no, I'm just taking photos, whatever, you know. So with a cube, with a box, you always have to rig up a monitor on it, plug it in, an handle, and then you go. And uh, this is an extra three, four steps that uh, is not gonna allow you to, uh, to be very run and gun. So this is the best run and gun form factor for the simple fact that it does, doesn't attract a lot of attention. You have your monitor right here in the back. It can seem like a photo camera and you're ready to go with just an internal battery and a lens in front of it, nothing else. So people that don't want to understand this body, I mean, I don't know what to do. I mean, my opinion, you want a box camera? Go out, go out move on with your life and buy one. There's Komodo, Komodo X, Zcam, Kinefinity, plenty of options. Go there and buy it while you're waiting for Blackmagic. I know why, because it costs nothing and because it looks amazing. So. Just my thoughts, but I wanted to, I wanted to actually, I'm going to make a video about it, but I wanted this to be clear because I'm seriously over all this box, box, box. I, I do understand some people might want a modular camera for whatever reason. It's totally fine. Then just stop complaining, stop crying online and put the, the little smile with the, with, with the, uh, with the tears. Just buy a Zika, buy a Kinefinity, buy a Red, buy an Alexa Mini. Uh, it's not rocket science. If you don't like this form factor, you have plenty of other options. It's a free market. Just go ahead and buy whatever you want. Uh, I just wanted to make this point very clear. The, 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 oh, this is the other ridiculous comment. It feels cheap. It does not feel cheap. I mean, to me, an FX3 feels cheap. What, what's cheap about this? If it's... Every time I go out with this, like, and I, and I show it to my friend, like, oh, this is badass. Like, what is it? I mean, dude, this is like, a, it's pretty durable plastic. Uh, this is rubber. Like, a, that's a camera. I mean, do you buy a camera because what delivers or because it, because its design is beautiful? Like, I don't understand people. Oh, it's ugly. Okay. So what do you do with your camera? You just leave it on your desk and take photos for Instagram. If that's what you're doing, sure. Go get a cool camera. The reality is that there's no camera out there that for this price are going to deliver what Blackmagic delivers, period. I mean, this is not even arguable, in my opinion. Uh, I do, I do understand, I do understand the, the, the gram, the Instagram and the social media and the fact that you want to appear to your client like you have a badass camera that costs thousands of dollars. I get it, I get it, I get it. Then go ahead and buy a box. Also, my modest opinion, and, and this guy is just my opinion, of course, uh, I'm entitled to, to say so because I'm on my channel, right? So uh, the Alexa Mini was born for gimbals and Steadicam and drones. Then someone decided to use it as a main camera because, uh, okay, I use the Alexa Classic. I use the, um, the Classic many times. I use the Amira. I use the Mini many times. And I can tell you, the mini I always hated because by the time you rig it up, it's heavier than a classic and then a mirror. And guys, the Amira and the classic, you need two people to operate. The mini was very uncomfortable to operate. I like the Ursa better for the shoulder, for the, you know, it looks more like a camcorder. It looks something more ergonomic in my opinion. So I also, this is not 
has anything to do with red. Huh? This is the same argument that I do with Ari and with all this kind of stuff because, uh, um, <clears throat> yeah, because I think their, their ergonomic is, is just better and, and that's it. Just my opinion and just how I like to operate a camera. But to me, all this boxy thing, it seems like an, a, a trend, a Instagram or YouTube trend. So you can take photo of your rig and it looks badass with a client. And so you're happy, but whatever, um, whatever, whatever guys. Uh, again, this is, uh, I don't have anything against anyone. I'm just expressing my opinion and just trying to educate some people that are stressed out about this boxy thing and about this rolling shutter and about this, this and that and that. Um, guys, when it comes to real work, this camera is a beast, a beast, a beast. And, uh, and the fact of having this kind of monitor and this kind of internal battery, it's mind blowing to me. It's pretty amazing. <sighs> okay. You don't like it? Move on with your life. No, but I, I can't, I mean, there's people, whatever, but you are an influencer, YouTuber with millions of thousands of subscribers and you crying on black magic social media pause yeah they, we want it we want a cube it's just ridiculous man i don't know i don't know whatever uh okay sorry guys i deviated a little bit but i just wanted to express my opinion i'm gonna release a video about it i can't even read all the comments so um yeah that uh, yeah miguel is uh, the people think that uh Gigi more does so yeah the, the yeah the, the camera is more important than the story yeah this is another this is another thing but uh yeah i'm always curious like what these people should like at the point where i'm thinking if, if these people ever ever step of a, a, a foot on set because i'm like uh, all you do is crying because because of a box camera that means well you're not working because you don't have a box camera just go buy a, a damn z cam and, and stop complaining I'm trying to understand why you want to lose the screen that's worth $1,000 for a box camera to pay $1,000 for a monitor. This is a good, uh, this is a good, uh, but you guys, I mean, it would be nice to do like a test, right? Where I sit here with my uh, pocket. I can, I can take out the lens, whatever. It's not a pocket, it's a 6K foot frame. And then next to me, there's someone with a Z cam or a Kinefinity or Komodo, whatever. And then we say, okay, let's go. Three, two, one. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm just ready. That guy needs to put a cage on it or a handle on it and a battery in the back and the, and the lens and the, and the handle and then the, the monitor and all this kind of stuff. And I mean, in case of a ready, also it's going to take a minute to, to boot up. So that's another extra 60 seconds that you need for, to turn on a red. But I mean, uh, yes, the full frame is still records on an SSD. Correct. But being the CF Express so cheap, guys, I think they're, you know. So, uh, because I see uh, comments flying. Regarding out of focus, guys, I'm not gonna even try to answer or argument again because uh, if you are on this live, if you are on this channel, if you're new, Google Matteo Bertoli focus on YouTube, you, you're gonna see. Point, long story short, how to focus on a professional set for aspiring DP does not exist. So I'm not even, uh, EBs even less. So these are things that don't exist in the black magic philosophy. They don't ex exist in cinema. They don't exist in a professional filmmaking environment. So uh, I'm not gonna even talk about it. Uh, Noah, last set I was on a set. Uh, last set I was uh, with a Komodo. Uh, they see and some people hate it because it was too small and hard to reach ports. So there's definitely a use, but the idea that box is always better is just crazy. Yeah, even um, even my 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 first DC here, Gonzalo, he told me that he shot something with the red Komodo and it basically missed. Uh, I think it was a documentary about a maybe a marathon or a run or something, and uh, they missed a bunch of shots because it takes 45, 40 seconds to boot up, and they missed a bunch of shots because of this. So, uh, this is, this is something I never understood about right? why it takes so long to boot up. <laughs> ah, anyway. The dynamic range compared to the Pocket 6K, to me, seems, I can't, okay, the Pocket 6K dynamic range was 
fantastic. This, to me, it looks a little bit better because you have a little bit more information, I think, in the shadows, and you retain the highlights. It's so smooth. I want to show you this sunset shot, actually, that I put it just for you. Uh, tell me if you see it. We'll try. Uh, old photo. Oh, it didn't transfer them? Wait. This? No, it didn't transfer them. Hold on a second. Oh, wait. I have them on my phone, right? So why did it mess up? Oh, maybe it didn't never start. Yeah, it did start. Oh, no. I fell off. Okay, let me see if you see them. Can you quickly check in the, is it a different anamorphic with the squeeze, please? It's in the camera setting, <coughs> page, monitor, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, second tab. I'll tell you now. Monitor, uh, page, monitor, second tab, <coughs> anamorphic with the squeeze. Uh, it's on LCD because I can't really find it. HDMI, I don't know. Viewfinder, I can't see it. <coughs> but it does shoot 4,832 by 4,032. So this is the aspect ratio. Guys, what's going on? It doesn't, it doesn't get the photos. Oh, here, all right. Let me see if you see this. If you see this, say yes. Let's see. Okay. Does it does it look okay in terms of quality or Okay, I wanted to show you this one which I think that this is where I was like this is not 30 stop dynamic range, okay? So let me hold it up like this. If you can see here, I mean, this was completely backlit against the sun. If you check out the details here, it's quite unbelievable uh, what this camera is able to capture and the, the incredibly uh, low noise in the shadows are, are pretty pretty incredible like you can see even like the texture of the sand and like um, and and another frame that i wanted to show you guys that i posted on my instagram <clears throat> because this is like mind-blowing uh give me just a second because i'm gonna show you this you're gonna be blown away uh it's here okay just one frame but just to give you, give you guys an idea of what this sensor can capture, check this out. Okay, you see this frame? All right, you check out the, there's people on the top of the cliff, right? Now I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna show you. You can see, you can see the people close. You, you're able to distinguish people close at the top of the rock, which is nuts. And again, I'm gonna zoom out. I mean, look where we started, right here. And we basically can go all the way up here. You can, you can almost see the guy in the face. And guys, these, these guys were far. These guys were far. So it's beautiful. Beautiful dynamic range, beautiful everything. And this one was shot at ISO 1250 <coughs> under a street light. So pretty good as well. Great colors. And uh, I want to show you the bokeh here because it's really beautiful. So this was just a street lamp, street light, basically hitting her on the face. And uh, here it was a ISO 800. 
F2, like R, the Boca, and look how clean the face is. This is quite unbelievable, guys. It's quite unbelievable. So it's a big sensor. <laughs> and uh, one more, <coughs> one more, just one more. Uh, where is it? This one. This one, I don't have it. Uh, this one. This was, uh, well, I put my camera with a 90 mil on the backpack and I basically, with the 90 mil on the full frame and I basically was uh, shooting this. And even here, it, the insane amount of details are quite impressive. So just to give you guys an example of how big this sensor is and the details you can capture. I mean, look at this. Okay, and these guys, <clears throat> these are shadows. These are pure shadows. You can still see details in these kind of shadows at this kind of zoom, which is uh, unbelievable. So, yeah, if I get close to the camera, guys, I have to <clears throat> adjust the focus, and you know I don't use autofocus, so it's a problem. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, again, I also do a side by side with the original 6K with the Ursa. It is a pretty crazy level of detail, Jordan. It's uh, it's pretty mind blowing. I was shocked. I didn't really expect. Like usually, you get this from the 80 80 megapixel sensor of the Ursa. You can zoom in quite quite a, quite a bit, but on this kind of camera, I was like, wow. Um, yeah, the Pocket 6K and the Kuka Speed 3 should be amazing. <sighs> the man with the white shirt has a coffee stain, that's crazy. If that is true, I didn't know, I'm, I'm gonna check it out later, but... But yeah, guys, at night, in the street, with the street lights, lamps, you're totally fine with ISO 400, 800. If you need a little bit of extra step, you can go 1250, I think 1600. Even with the original 6K, I never went past 2000 because for me, it's a little bit too much. But I have to say, if you have uh, time to remove noise in uh, post-production, uh, that's fine. You, you're gonna be fine even at 3200. But to me, it's a little bit too noisy. Uh, low light comparison. Yeah, I'm gonna do that, guys, because the low light comparison is gonna blow up. It's gonna, people are gonna go crazy for the low light. Uh, capabilities of this camera which is fine enough we all this complaining about the body about this about that but that nobody even you know thought about it like oh yeah well, maybe it's gonna be great in low light like no see not, not a single person but <sighs> okay uh, 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 the possible where good quality no Miguel the I mean how much was the 6k pro 2500 the same of course they can't put the the ursa nd in there and uh, if you think about it the ursa is 3 nd right the pocket 6 the 6k pro has two and four stops and in order to get the six stop they put the two stop and the four stop together so my test i was noticing a little bit too uh, much chroma noise and yeah something you can get rid of it yeah but i don't want to and also there was a little bit of a shift so that's why I was not really too happy. But uh, uh, you feel the loose of NDs on board? No, the Luca, I don't, again, uh, yeah, I'm explaining it now, but I, I don't really care about uh, ND. I mean, I care, I would love to have them, but uh, <clears throat> I also understand that Blackmagic, if they didn't put them, there was a reason. So, and if I have to pick between OLPF and ND, bad ND, I would probably pick uh, OLPF. If they were incredible Ursa quality ND, IRND, maybe we could, could have deal it, but I think there's just no <clears throat> physical space in the sensor to put them, so. <clears throat> okay, uh, and the other point I wanted to do, I think I did all the points. Yeah, the FX3 point is actually one of the most 
the biggest one I wanted to make, but I, I can't get all these people getting excited for 4K DCI 24P after two years of camera release, but everybody's piece of black magic. Ah, uh, whatever. Always like that. The power of marketing. The Sony puts this camera in the pockets of all these YouTubers and they tell them, if you're gonna say crap about the camera, we're gonna confiscate it, ha <laughs> ha. That's a strategy, so that's why nobody ever said anything bad about Sony, because otherwise they would never get the next Sony, which comes out probably in two days or three days, because they release six cameras per week, so we see, but guys, it's 6 p.m. here in Lisbon, uh, almost happy hour time, so I hope I answer, I can answer a couple more questions, because sorry guys, the, all the first ones, the, uh, I mean, we kept the 200 viewers uh, constant for an hour and 10 minutes, so I can answer I can answer a couple more questions if you have any doubts, but um, but I think I talk about pretty much everything. So, um, so hey, the 6K Pro full frame is maybe it's coming. Maybe it's gonna be in a different body. Maybe it's gonna be a box. I don't have a box. Otherwise, if you want a box, just take a camera and you put it in a box. Like, come on. Which I do use in the pocket, uh, I'm using these guys. Nizi IR ND. The, so the, you, have a, you have a three stops. You have a six stops, three stop. You have a six stops, which is the one that I use the most. And then you have the 10 stop, because this kit I think was designed for photographers. And uh, the problem with the 10 stops is that sometimes it's too much, but just to give you guys an idea of the amount of lights that it gets into the sensor, at 8 a.m. I was shooting ISO 400 under the sun in Lisbon with a 10 stop ND at f2.8 and the footage was perfectly exposed. This should give you an idea about how much light this sensor is capturing. So, uh, but yeah. IRND. I wish this was like eight or nine because ten is a little bit too much. Um, going to sell one of my six K Pro to get this good, good. Uh, yeah, no, I think you, you do the right choice. Uh, also, there's a, this misconception where the pocket uh, or the this is uh, ah. These names, man, made me crazy. The Cinema Camera 6K has to be the perfect camera, has to be the camera that you use for every job. This is not true, guys. This is a great camera for certain things. Um, for certain things, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna still use the Ursa 12K. For example, for all the wine jobs that I used to do that requires a super quick turnaround, I'm just gonna, and travel all around Europe, I'm gonna use the uh, 6K uh, full frame camera. Why not? For a bigger production or documentary or future films, who knows, I'm gonna use the Ursa, and then maybe for low light, I'm gonna have my uh, 6K full frame as a B-cam. Like, there's no a camera that can work for everything and for everybody. People keep wanting this 8K, 120p, global shutter, uh, all this uh, six hours battery life, uh, super compressed, but like, you can't have everything in a camera. There are camera for different jobs, and then you have to pick the right tool for the job. I think that Blackmagic for the price, for how it price its camera, is the one that is giving you the most on the market. It, nobody comes even close. Guys, the Ursa 12K is a, a $6,000 camera. They shoot 12K, 75P, 8K, 120P, any kind of a compression. I mean, it's the best camera. Like, it, there's nothing on the market for that price, price range that comes even close to the Ursa. Internal ND, Veman battery, full XLR, uh, it's, find me something like that. And of course, if, it would, if the footage would look like crap, I would be like, yeah, but the footage looks like crap. But the footage looks fantastic and the Ursa 12K is probably still the best camera I ever owned and I use. I think the footage is something else on that camera, um, probably even more than this, but again, they do two different things. So. We we'll see, we we'll see, we we'll see. Yeah, Jello City, man. Welcome to the Jello City. 25, I, I think, it, I'm wondering always if these people are masturbating on these numbers, like that they're true. They're 25 millisecond readout, unusable. 
These people probably never shot one thing in their life. I'm assuming. No built in, and this sucks. $2,500 full frame OLPF built in monitor, uh, L mount, CF Express, guys. I mean, you can't have the perfect camera. Come on. Uh, all these people always measuring that alt stop dynamic range and complaining and complaining. And complaining. Yeah, go out there and shoot something. Uh, why he needs to cry? Air pollution is good. Air pollution is good. Uh, NPF battery, guys. I was able, of course, I didn't do a continuously shoot, shooting test, but I was out there shooting my short clips here and there in Lisbon and at 6k open gate 24p I was able to get about an hour and 30 minutes sometimes an hour and 15 so not continuous shooting but shooting that, that means a clip every few seconds so that was it why did I not upgrade full frame for 6k pro guys I, I don't know if you just joined the live I told you 75 times there's probably no space, very likely there's no space for the ND with the Leica L sensor. So they have to find compromise. Overheating is a problem that never existed on any Blackmagic cameras as far as I know. So there's no overheating problem. You can shoot for six hours and it's not going to overheat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> YouTubers want 8K, 240p, infinite battery, dual car slot, no overheating, full size extra port, perfect preamps, old metal construction under 2K, compatible with all lenses. Yeah, man, like fucking people are just like on another planet. They don't live in this world. Because <laughs> uh, Body G2 didn't realize this camera was coming out. Yeah, nobody realized it. I mean, I, I knew, but. Thank you, Leo. Yeah, yeah, you can find some of my footage. Actually, if you guys want to download some of the footage that I shot, um, you can go on Blackmagic uh, website under the BMCC 6K uh, page. You click to gallery and I'm at the very bottom of the page. <laughs> Miguel, that's a good point. Tell me another camera at this price point that shoots raw 12-bit can't find one and I and honestly to be honest I, I said it before I think that's why people are complaining so much because they probably try to when like um, they try to go like Kine Affinity route or um, Zcam route or whatever of course they're not gonna tell you oh man I did a mistake I think they went for this route and and they just like you know I have people like friends of mine they use Sony constantly right and every time they look at the footage, they're like, oh man, black magic is just on another level. And I'm like, yep, 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 yep. Uh, okay, guys, time to go, time to go, time to go get a glass of wine. Uh, I'm glad that this camera exists, but why are you against the box style of camera? Isn't it offer, isn't it nice to offer? Nicholas, I explained it why I'm not against. I mean, I just think is the wrong form factor for a camera. This is just my opinion. I love the Venice form factor. I love the uh, Amira form factor. I love the classic form factor. I think a cube is ergonomically terrible. It's a pain in the ass to rig up and balance properly. And by the time you rig it up and you balance properly, it's gonna weigh quite a lot. At least the Alexa Mini did, uh, and that's about it. So I think it's a, just a bad ergonomic, and it's just a, a bad form factor for a thin camera, for anything shoulder or anything. I think the Ursa is great, Amira, Venice, Panasonic Eva, EVA, whatever. All those cameras, in my opinion, they're much better ergonomic than these cubes. What can I say? Uh, I mean, but I'm not against it. Eh? I mean, for sure. But, uh, but keep complaining and crying because there's no box form factor, or whatever. It, it seems completely a logic question. SDI will be nice. Yes, but you have SDI on the Ursa. Again, 
this is not a full production camera. I mean, you can rig it up to be, and it could be, but guys, it's a $2,500 camera that serves its purpose. Uh, they're not gonna shoot the next Oscar movie with this camera. They, you know, it's for independent filmmaker, people that are approaching cinematography, and HDMI is a much better port than SDI for this kind of situation, you know? So, uh, it's just uh, you know, two different level. If you want a full production camera, you just buy an Ursa. It's shipping in a box. Perfect, then you're just not gonna take it out of the box and, and you're good to go. Fossil Black Magic is a 12K update, full frame with that mount. I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything. I can speculate. Uh, it's interesting because this is not their in house sensor. So I think on the Ursa, they're going to keep going with their in house sensor. So I'm assuming they're working or they worked or David Ready uh, a sort of full frame in house sensor, maybe do a native ISO for the next Ursa. Uh, they can probably have a better performance and they can put it in a little bit smaller or lighter body. But guys, even the Ursa, which everybody, everybody crying about the form factor, it's an old camcorder, blah, blah, blah. All the big metal thing that you see there is because of the cooling system. Like that camera shoots 8K 120p raw. You need space and you need metal and you need uh, components that cool down the camera. I mean, I've been shooting for 12 hours uh, for a documentary, uh, AK under 20 p no stop, man. It's, it's, it's a beast. You can't do that on such a small four factor. You need, the technology is not there yet to cool it down properly. So that's, that's the big deal. But you know, it seems like everybody's an engineer, right? Like, oh, why they don't have an AK global shutter? Like if you think like Magic wouldn't have done it if they could have, Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, now we're going to go get an happy hour because it's a Friday 620. It was a very intense week. <sighs> yeah, stressed out. I, had to, I, I edited basically for 48 hours straight. I'm, uh, I'm cooked. But uh, yeah, it's going to be way more footage coming. Oh, jeez. I have to edit. I have to edit more and more and more and more stuff. Okay, one hour and 20 minutes. Let's see what it is. Uh, yeah, don't buy Rocky Nose, guys. So then why not just make it a pocket cinema camera, 6K full frame? I don't understand this question, guys. My brain is uh, disconnecting. Uh, I answer way too many questions. Arrived here just now. Hi, Charles. Low light is better than the 6K G2 Pro? Absolutely, 100% better. Yeah, low light on this camera. I just talked about it. Now we're going to press end stream. It's gonna upload on the channel. You're gonna be able to see and hear what I said. Low light on this camera is uh, the best low light camera that Blackmagic ever ever did, hundred percent. I don't think they're gonna make an internal ND, guys. I, I, I reply already to this. They this probably if they could have, they would have done it. There's probably physically no space to put the ND because of the flange of the Leica L, which only gives it, I think, 18 or 15 millimeter, 20 millimeter, something like that. There's just no space to put it. Um, I'm happy there's no at the end though. All right, guys. Yeah, I, I go to sleep. No, I'm, go <laughs> I'm gonna go get some rest. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, but yeah. Yeah, thank you so much, guys, for watching. Uh, I hope everything is clear. I mean, I didn't want to offend anyone and. I hope you guys get your uh, question answered and uh, all, every doubt you have, again, send me a text on Instagram at Matteo Bertoli or just comments under the video. On Instagram, I can send you frames and I can send you clips and I can send you all this kind of stuff, full, full resolution. So if you want, follow me on Instagram, send me a DM and uh, I'll see you there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And I'll see you very soon with another uh, I can't even, I can't get out the pocket name out of my hand with another Blackmagic Cinema Camera 6K full frame video. All right, cheers, guy. Have a good one. Have a good weekend.